Hello and welcome to another episode here on my channel. My name is Ken Small and today let's talk about the things I'm looking most forward to in the Evil Genius 2. Now before we jump into the topic, two things I really want to make clear before we jump into it. First things first, what you are seeing here is not new gameplay, this is just some trailer smashed together and it's just for, well, the purpose of having something in the background, but that's mostly me talking. Second, yes, I know, some of the things we will talk about will be already known, has been already announced, has been even showcased to us, and then some other things, well, we don't know about yet. So let's talk about Evil Genius 2 and the things I would love to see to change for the second game. Well, the first thing I have to say is that Evil Genius 1 is a very solid foundation. Like even, wow, over 16 years after its release, it's still a very solid game. There is still like, even if you play it nowadays, it's still fun, it's still solid. Did it age? Yeah, yeah it did, after 16 years and zero patches. Yeah, games moved forward. But I would say that definitely Evil Genius is still a relatively solid game with some minor issues here and there, but most of the gameplay you find in the game doesn't have to be completely reworked. Just extending it or like fixing some of the issues could be completely enough for the second game. So with that said, let's talk about the things I would love to see changed. Well, the first thing was already announced and was one of the very first things they actually showcased is base building. Now, the base in Evil Genius 1 was unfortunately, um, how do I put this? A little bit too small for your evil plans? Like, for conquering the world, you had a very small base, and even the second base you get on the second island was relatively small, where the biggest problem was just that you couldn't really rearrange anything, right? Like, when you did the base building in Evil Genius 1, you could only make a bigger space. There was no way of just, well, fixing a mishap. Or when the room became too big, you couldn't make it smaller. And especially when you were new to the game, you didn't really know how big those um, areas had to be. Those rooms had to be in the end. I still remember one of my first playthroughs because I had to laugh about myself and then I had to restart the game was because I was building my personal layer for my evil genius. And of course, being an evil genius, I was like, yeah, I need I need the biggest room in this building. Like, I mean, this cave, right? I have to make it more homely. It has to be big. So I built the biggest room for my evil genius till I just realized afterwards, yeah, that was not the smartest evil idea I ever had in my life because, well, actually your evil genius doesn't need too much room and I couldn't fix it. You, you, you couldn't retract it. It was what it was and, well, <laughs> I had to restart because that was the only way how you could do it. And that was unfortunate. So... Glad that you can, of course, now in the second game actually change things. You can actually retract things, you can rebuild things, you can change the rooms again. Like, you actually now have absolute control over your evil base. And, of course, which is also very important, you can now build on top of each other. Like, you have levels, and we will see how big those levels are, right? Like, I assume that the closer it basically gets to the top, the smaller the area becomes. So, I would at least assume. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm i just glad that you can now do that. Um, of course, we have to see, like, when it comes to building rooms, like, where do you want to build your rooms? Like, how quickly can you go to level 3 or level 2 or something like that? Like, how quickly can you change the levels with your minions? and with your henchmen, and yeah, that's of course things we have to see. But I'm already happy about that we can just have just more control over building our evil base, and that is definitely one of the things I wanted to see being changed for Evil Genius 2. 
And it seems like that's exactly what we are getting. So awesome. Now, the next thing has something to do with base building, but weirdly enough, hasn't. And if you're like, huh, what now? Well, let's talk about the casino and or the hotel. We are just calling it a casino, even though in the first one it was more a hotel than an actual casino. But the casino was weird in the first game because it was completely disconnected from your base, but was also very important to your base operation because it was your front, right? It was your front to the forces of good and you were pretending to be just, well, a casino slash hotel owner and there is nothing evil going on on this island besides of tourism. And, well, the problem was just it was so disconnected from your base that I actually had playthroughs where I didn't build the hotel. I didn't utilize it at all. And to be honest, it didn't really make a difference for me. Like, yeah, sure, the forces of uh, good were looking around more, right? They were like, yeah, let's look around, let's, let's find this evil base, and they were just quicker in my base. But in the end, they were always finding my base. Like, no matter how good my hotel was and how many minions I had there to, like, well, keep the cover up, at the end... The forces of good would find my base, so why prolong the inevitable and just take care of them? And yeah, that was basically one of the reasons why I started to not even use the hotel anymore. And the problem was also whenever there was a problem at my hotel, like a super spy was running around or the forces of good starting to fight there, I had to send my minions over and most of the time, well, all my servant minions were already dead before my guards could even arrive. Like, I couldn't even react to it. So, yeah, unfortunately, the hotel in the first game was kind of important. Like, you could see that the developers definitely intended to make it an important gameplay part. But it didn't really pan out. So, this seems to change in the second one. And I'm really curious to see, like, how much does it change. But the first important part is, this time, it's really a front. Right? Like, this is the first entry level to your secret layer. So everyone who is trying to get into your secret layer has to go through the casino slash hotel. And that is already fantastic because, well, at least everything is now close by. But I'm really curious, like, how much you can do there. Like, how many minions you can have, you can work for you. Like, how many items you can actually build there. Like, when I think back about the first one, <laughs> there was there was not a lot of, like, items I could actually place in the hotel. Like, it always looked a little bit empty and boring, right? And I'm really hoping that in Evil Genius 2, you can actually do a little bit more with it. And you can actually end up with the forces of good just believing that this is just a casino and then they are leaving at some point again. Like, if not, I at least hope that at some point there will be, well, expansions or DLCs for the game if it sells well and then they will expand on the casino. Like, I definitely want to do more with it because I, I always believe that in the James Bond movies or even like Austin Power movies, um, like the casinos and hotels were always super duper important, right? And yeah, I just want to see that for Evil Genius too. And yeah, we, we will see. But it looks already pretty cool and definitely more lively than the first game. And I want to see where they go with it. Speaking of another thing, which they haven't really shown too much yet, um, but definitely needs a few updates is the world map. The world map was paramount to your victory in Evil Genius 1, right? If you didn't use the world map, well then, yeah, your world domination didn't go uh, for a long time. And, well, you never did it. So you had to use the world map. But the world map was also a little bit weird. Like, you basically did send your minions around and then you just wait. Like there was no real interaction with the world map besides of sending your minions to a point, click on a button and then leave it alone, even though it was super important. So I hope they're expanding on that a little bit. And one of the things 
I really want to see. Like, if, if they keeping the world map as it is, but one of the things which are really, really, really duper important to me, notifications. This was the worst thing in Evil Genius 1. I lost so many minions on the world map because there was no notifications. Because what could happen if you have never played the first one is you had your minions on the world map doing your evil deeds and well those evil deeds were not necessarily unnoticed by the forces of evil right and they could send agents against you and if you were not like cautious about this and you didn't hide your minions well then your minions would die and sometimes you were so focused on your main base because shit was hitting the fan that you didn't really look at the world map. Like you were far too much focused on the whole thing of saving your base and of course saving your evil genius. And then you would go back after a minute or two to the world map and you realized, oh, my minions are dead. Well, that's unfortunate. Whoops. And I really just hope that in the second game there will be notifications. Like, I know it's such a simple thing. And I'm actually really surprised that it wasn't really there in the first one. Like, it's really just such a easy quality of life thing. And it has nothing to do with make it too easy or anything. It's just, again, super annoying when you are focusing hard on your base because something is going down there. And then the world map is also spinning. And then two minutes later, you are just coming back. There was no announcement, no notification, nothing. And all your minions died, or like a good chunk of them. Especially that was making me really angry when you had some very valuable minions on the map for like certain um, abilities or like certain items, or you wanted to get like certain characters, right? And then you would lose the special minions and it was like, why didn't you notify me, please? And yeah, I, I, I really hope that that is one of the things they will actually bring in, like at least give me notifications. Uh, one of the things I also would love to see is how you are getting like new special minions, like an Evil Genius one, right? You had to go to the world map, you had to capture um, that specific minion you then want, well, the person you wanted to use to train your minion to the next special minion, right? And I never liked that because every time when you would lose too many of your minions, you had to go out there on the world map again and then just capture the person again. And it was just, it was a little bit tedious and not necessary. So I'm hoping actually that in the second game, you don't have to do that anymore. But now, Let's talk about the last thing for today. And this is the biggest one. This is actually a thing which I hope they rework. They completely throw it out of the window and make it anew. And it seems like they do. Like at least what we have heard and seen from some pre uh, from preview events. But I still want to talk about it. And that is research. Research in the first game, I, 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 I can't. Let me describe the research way in Evil Genius 1 to you if you have never seen it. So you needed, of course, scientists. So you have to capture them at some point in the game and then you have enough scientists in your base. And then, of course, you need a room and this room needs all the scientific um, items you need for research. So if you have those two things, you can start to do research, but not how you think it would work. Now in Evil Genius 1, scientists will walk through your base and will at some random point take notes of an item. And if they took enough notes, they would start to give you a choice how you want to start a research project progress for that item. How did that work? Well, you had the item and then you had to choose the right 
research facility to start the research. If you choose the wrong one, you had to start a new. And I mean a new, a new. So your scientist had to go around again, had to take enough notes before you could actually start the research of that item again. Now, you could, of course, shell out some money to eliminate the wrong research items. And then you would only have um, the research items which can actually produce um, the product you want in the end. But, and this is the big but, you didn't know what it was. Like, let's say, let's take a door. Let's take a door, right? So you want to research your door and you have two research items you can utilize. One of those research items will give you the tier two door, the next upgrade, and the other research item would give you another paint coat for the door. No, that wasn't real, like the paint coat wasn't real, but you get the idea. There's a tier two door and there is another paint for the door. And you didn't know which was one, at least not at the beginning. Like, of course, if you, um, if you already have played the game, you knew which item you had to choose. But especially at the beginning, and, well, where online guides and YouTube videos weren't really a thing in 2004 at the beginning, it was just poor random. And it was so infuriating because afterwards, when you choose one of the research paths, it started from the beginning. You had to wait till your scientists are going through your layer, finding the items, taking notes, and so on and so forth. So as you can see, that was absolutely annoying because sometimes I had playthroughs, like even nowadays, I still have playthroughs where I wait for my tier two doors till like the end of the first level or sometimes don't even see it in the first level. And then I have like playthroughs where I get that in the first two hours of gameplay. And it's like, okay, can we, can we make this less random, please? Please? Because it's, um, it's really annoying. And the easiest way, and that's apparently what they are, will do. Like that's, that's probably the thing they're going for, at least what we have seen from some of the previews, is that you have actually like a, pre, um, um, a research tree. And then you can just accumulate research points and then you could just say, okay, I want to have this researched or go down this tree and research this, right? Like you would actually think a normal research tree is functioning. It seems like they are going for that. And that is so needed for Evil Genius 2. Like again, Evil Genius 1 is a fun game, but there were definitely some annoying things there like, well, the research tree. Def definitely, or well, the lack of the research tree to be more precise. And I really, really hope that that is exactly what we are getting. So yeah, I, I hope they are going for that. But besides that, I don't, I don't really have like a lot of other things at this point I want to talk about. Because as I said before, Evil Genius 1 was a very solid game with a very solid foundation. And most of the gameplay elements we already had in Evil Genius 1 can just be utilized and refined in the end. Expanded, refined, and most of the things actually just need some quality of life changes, which I'm pretty sure they will add. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to Evil Genius 2. And we would definitely do a full playthrough of the game when it comes out. And there will be more Evil Genius videos coming in the foreseeable future where I'll just talk about gameplay, give my impressions, or even give some ideas I would love to see in the second game. Because, well, we're getting closer and closer to the release and I can't wait. I definitely can't. So thank you so much for watching. If you're on your way out, I would appreciate if you click on the like button under the video. And if you're new to the channel, and you want to see more Evil Genius 2 videos and also gameplay news, live streams from Monday to Friday, and even more video games, don't forget to subscribe and I would also appreciate that. So thank you very much for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.